How's it going everyone? So this is going to be a pretty different style of video. It is me behind the camera in my garage. And this time I'm going to be documenting a bit more information regarding my event style robots because I wanted to move to that kind of format of video stuff for this channel. And that was originally my plan to start with last year. But unfortunately the bot that I was going to try to document the process for really disappointed me so um i just wasn't as incentivized to make a video about it so i decided for this one i'm going to document before it fights so that people know what it is and i'll have more of an incentive to explain what happens to it when it eventually does fight so i guess we'll just break the ice so this is my fourth beetle that i have built of course if you remember filibuster v1 and v2 those were collaborative efforts with my good friend and partner in all of this the last two of those though these are all of my own designs that I have worked on. So this right here is Yoink. I'm going to be very careful. I don't have too much space to work with, but if it wasn't obvious, it is a lifter suplexer style of robot with four-wheel drive and two low forks at the front. If you're curious, it is based off of a bot I made in a video game. You might have seen Battle RC on the channel before. It is a bot I made in the game, and it did quite well in the game, and it felt like a good design to try to scale up to a beetle weight version essentially so i guess just basics four wheel drive it is the same electronic setup as yeeter did which of course i didn't really explain much but it's a lot of just because motors just because servo this little kind of just static hat right now covered this i'm going to make a new one of this because of weight and having that but it's essentially just a basic lifter i've done tests and it was able to fully suplex over one of my old beetle carcasses that I still have. So it should be pretty darn solid in terms of the lifter power, which is one of the main things that I was prioritizing with this. As for theme, um, I think the theme is somewhat obvious. It is pig themed or I guess farm themed. I have a little mini yoink that maybe I'll grab and show later, but that's not really a priority. But essentially, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of just a farm general pig theme, I guess. It says yoink on the back. Not the most clear, but you know, you get the idea. It's it's a farm theme bot. So to start with this, I'm gonna start by covering some of the design ideas I had with this, and then I'm gonna take the, the lid off of it and show a bit more what's going on on the inside. I think that's a good plan. So I'm gonna start off this part by going over some of the things I guess I've learned from the past few Beatles that I've done and how that kind of factored into the current design idea. So the first one, this was of course the first filibuster. I did have a video up covering the full event report on the channel this is all that is unfortunately left of it after a drift really did a number on this and this one i mean this was our first beetle so it was very much the learning process but essentially the main gist of it was um having the whole frame having the bot basically just one big frame with no extra armor was definitely a mistake and also just not countersinking um flat flathead screws really not a good design idea in that part so this was i know essentially kind of just we learned a lot from it a lot of time went in these inserts just pulled out immediately unfortunately that we had in there but you know it did all right learned a bit more about driving and a bit more about electronic stuff and then from there we were just learning about changing escs and stuff like that and that eventually led to filibuster v2 as parts spill all over the place which is actually still mostly intact here it is right here. Not much has been touched with this thing in a while. Of course, this one, similar, we took the advice of, oh, having the frame being like a whole big thing with no real good armor wasn't smart. And it held up much, much better than V1 did, which was partially the goal. Because, I mean, we didn't expect to go super far with this thing. But as you like, we had big TPU blockers and we learned a lot. TPU is a hell of a material to use for stuff like this because it just takes hits really nicely. We switched over to the big Scorpion ESC, which you kind of see here. Uh, same motor. Unfortunately, we, ha we had a different ESC we wanted to use for the weapon. But it just completely was not up for the task. We were stuck using the weaker one that we had in v1 of filibuster and also this weapon just terrible screw choice to keep the dual disc in part because this split in like every single fight so we were essentially just left with one actual spinning disc attached to the pulley and then one knot but we did also have very few issues with 
the weapon belt slipping, which was nice because we moved to the bigger, the bigger one, uh, bigger pulley thing that let us fit two belts in, which was pretty nice. So overall, this one I think went two and three. Didn't do, didn't do too bad. Didn't do great. It got its butt beat pretty badly in its second fight. I think against Skidmark, but its first fight against Osmia went pretty well. I might end up. I'll probably show a few clips from each bot as I go through and explain more of them. So this was the last of the filibusters for now. We might, we're probably thinking of making another one soon. Then after that came my first fully separate bot, which was Yeeter. And this one, this one was kind of just a nightmare. Competed in the new bots event for 2024 for Norwalk. And it just was awful, really. It, it had a first fight win by just forfeit, which, you know, wasn't great. Then it ended up fighting Power of Friendship, the bots from K Kokodo. And, God, it was, it was a really bad fight. But this thing basically learned could not drive, and it just skidded around horribly. There was just no control at all with this thing. Yeah, I went 0-2 and, oh and two in the main series, or the main fights, but then won a grudge match against... Um, I think, what was it called? Uh, Event Horizon, which was a pretty crazy win for it, especially because that's a really high-tier opponent managed to beat. Just was able to outlast it with the wedge config. The one thing that was good about this one, the armor held up amazingly. Like, none of the electronics broke the whole fight and was part of why I was able to make Yoink pretty easily because it just used the same electronics because nothing really broke. This was, I believe, the armor from the... Um, who was that? I think it was, it was Whisket. Maybe it was the name. Maybe it wasn't Whisket. I don't remember what exactly, but it was a, it was a drum spinner that I think might've been honey cracked. I don't remember exactly, but it held up really well and it managed to last the full fight, but it was getting punted around. But also this thing was incredibly light. If I recall, the whole frame was, um, of like only like a little over two pounds, which was, you know, not great because we, we originally were going to do a mini bot, but then the mini bot didn't work at the event. So we were just kind of stuffed with a very, underweight robot that got basically no flips in unfortunately but it did it did compete with it one more time after that and it got it got its butt beat still again in another sportsman event at that point i was like okay i'm, not, I'm done using i'm done using this thing but then moving on from that of course is going to be the new guy yoink which essentially tried to combine a lot of the things that i learned and worked from the last two bots into one. So what I did mainly four wheel drive because the drive was terrible with two wheel drive with the same motors in Yeeter. And I was like, I'm kind of dumb dealing with really just crappy drive. So I decided to move to that. It is just simply finger tech belts on the wheels. Currently the wheels are the finger tech foam wheels, but I kind of hate them because their traction is really bad, especially at Norwalk. So I'm going to be switching those out eventually for something much, much more durable i'd say i think flex foam 23 is the main one recommended so i will likely switch to that before this thing goes into actual fights but right now it just says the foam wheels um other main parts still using big tpu armor on the sides so you're not as thick as some of the past ones that i've had but it's still mounted on with you know like a good amount of screws and i mean it's going to take some some big hits for those to eventually fall off or give in the idea is just hopefully to keep the main chassis as scratch free as possible the top and bottom plates are both aluminum those just seem to work they were similar on yeeter and those took very little damage the whole event even after taking a few shots which was ideal didn't need anything else too fancy for that and doing stuff with uh Garolite is just kind of annoying <laughs> And then the forks and the forks and the lifter arm are all Air 500, except for this one piece in the middle that's TPU to help absorb some shots. Because realistically, these will take some hits. There's a little bit of give there to hopefully not destroy this servo. Because um, it fr frankly, this is probably a terrible design idea to have these connected properly like that. But you know, it, it's just kind of doing what I have to do with it just to make sure that it was able to work and fit in there. Because this is a little bit more compact, especially comparing it to filibuster like the size is it's not completely different but you can definitely tell like this is quite a bit smaller in terms of the frame but with that i'm going to now take the hood off and explain a little bit more about the electronics and how all that is it was pretty easy to assemble there's probably a really terrible time lapse but you know whatever works works so to show kind of a bit more what what goes on in here first of all there is a leaf in here probably got sucked up through that middle joint unfortunately but essentially the entire left side here is all for 
the battery, I have a little connector that extends from the Just Cause motherboard that feeds underneath here right into this little area. I do have cushioning. I know that these screws stick out, but I have spot there so that the battery isn't getting like impaled or something because this not not exactly how i'd like to lose a fight in terms of the drive casing for the motors this is the same kind of design i used for yeeter that worked incredibly well despite getting a lot of wheel shots in it's just a tpu casing that surrounds the whole motor kind of like a clamshell design and that means that with this tpu it can take some good shots and there won't be any hits that go directly through the motor to break it i have lost uh, very few motors doing this strategy. It's a lot better than mounting on the face like I did for the last two, uh, for the first two filibusters because those resulted in a lot of broken motors and motors are kind of expensive and don't really want any of that. So to get over to the other side, this is simply where the motherboard is just, just cause motherboard, not much, not much else to say about that. It's good for keeping space. Um, the motor, the servo motor, of course, is on top, and one of the big things that I think is the big red, big thing that's kind of a flaw with the design right now is that, wow, this servo is right in hit range, and to compensate for that, I did a scale check, and I still have a good bit of weight to use, not as bad as it was on, um, as Yeeter, but I still have quite a good bit, so I'm going to be able to make gives it a lot more room to squish and prevent just easy shots on there while it's still able to flip over. This is a 180 degree servo, so it can just go all the way back. There's probably people who are gonna really dislike that I'm moving the servo, but you know, I, I, don't, I don't care that much. Um, but that's pretty much the main parts about the inside. It's very simple with drive. I mean, it just, it just, just all use basically just cause stuff. I mean, it, it's, it's nothing too fancy. The motors though are absolute beasts. They drive extremely fast, which is very, very, very fun, very fast to drive, which I like. The forks are able to hinge pretty good. They don't get stuck too high, which is nice. I can lock them back, but there is going to be a screw in there to prevent that when I do have actual fights. So that shouldn't be a problem. And of course, it can't get stuck underneath. A good hit could probably mess them up, but I'm not too worried about that because, I mean, I'm, I'm not too worried about a lot of things with this. Um, this this is not it. I don't have too many fancy laser cutters and stuff that I like to use. I'm definitely, I think, more simple. There's definitely a lot more. This isn't the sports car of Beatles, I think is the right way to say, but it does, it does end up built as it does, and I think it does pretty good with the durability aspect. So I think... In the end, it should do pretty good, hopefully. One more part that I will highlight is going to be exactly how the weapon setup is so that this thing is connected through here. So it does use just one of those regular like aluminum servo arms because it's just what I had. And then this whole thing is essentially meant to, the left one mounts right here on the front. It couldn't extend as far back as this one because it has this part, he, the aluminum servo arm that keeps it in range. And then just has some uh, screws with nuts in there that are thread locked in there to prevent them from falling out and then of course this other one is mounted here 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 just along the way which as i mentioned does provide some decent flexibility in there which i do prefer because i do like it so that there's just a little bit of wiggle room to prevent anything from too bad happening on a hit because with this design letting mentioned directly attached there has to be at least some kind of give because realistically, if a spinner goes and just hits this and then the whole thing flies back, I mean, the servo is probably done. But realistically, I think that oh, I did have like sportsman events in mind for this. But in reality, I think it'll probably end up at its way in some actual main, just actual basic like beetle stuff as well. But there is a sportsman event near me that I was thinking about with this in mind so in the end if it doesn't do great that's it's kind of just whatever because i don't make i don't i don't know i think beetles in mind knowing that there's a good chance it's, it's gonna probably get its butt kicked especially against the really big spinners at norwalk but you know we manage it we, we just do this for fun and learn something small each time but I think that's where I'm going to leave off for this. I did want to do just a nice little video to show a bit more of the building side of this because, frankly, that's all I'm really doing at this point. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, this video will probably up be up probably the day or the day after I finish recording this. Um, if you guys have any questions or you want some advice about building beetles, um, I'm not the guy, but I can give you I can give you some advice at least on on that topic. Um, I do plan to 
hopefully make some more little mini versions. I am thinking of making an Antway version of this with the same beefy motor so that I can get like really good suplexes in as a ant weight, which I think would be really fun. But I think that's going to be, I think it'll be a future project. It'll just depend because I still do have uh, the Copperhead ant weight that I'm yet to do anything with. Unfortunately, that's kind of just stuck up at school and I haven't gotten it in tip shape to compete with events up, events up there, which is unfortunate, but it is fun. It, it is a good fun, good fun project to work on here over the, over my very long winter break. Anyway, that's where I'm going to leave this off, guys. See you. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching.